Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday. I was exhausted by the end of the week, so I'm just getting some content out now. I'll make sure this comes out today. We need to talk about where we are right now with XRP and kind of like their perspective. I guess, you know, people, you know, think once you have clarity, things just go up automatically and never stop coming down. Hold on, let's let's pull up the let's pull pull this up real quick. Hold on, let's see where we're at. I didn't even, I haven't even looked today, guys. Like seventy one cents. So we found we found a new stable level that we're we're building on right now, guys. Okay, so just zoom out, have some perspective. I am not here for seventy cents, a dollar fifty, or even three dollars. All right, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I don't watch day to day prices because I know we're still in a speculation market and not a utility bull market yet. A utility bull market comes when you have global regulation and you have blockchains that are be, being used by corporations on a massive scale. And we're, we're building into that, right? Right now is, is the building phase where different blockchains are being tested out for different different you know use cases. And they're, they're testing it on a massive level at institutions, at central banks, at regular banks, right? They're all getting used to using digital assets to improve their daily activities and their bottom line, all right? So, Zoom out, have some perspective. We we went from, what is this, 40, 47 cents to 70 cents, and now we built, uh, you know, we're steadily building support now at the 70 cent line. We need to break 92 cents. If we can start breaking 92 cents, we're, we're, we're going to be pushing for all time highs, right? Brad just came out with this yesterday. Let's play this and we'll talk about it. In some ways, it's ironic, you know, that the, the mission statement of the United States Security Exchange Commission is to protect investors. They went after Ripple suggesting that, you know, all kinds of things, everything we were doing was selling an unregistered security. And the judge really very clearly said, uh, you know, sales through exchanges, not a security. When it's used for compensation, not a security. When it's used for incentives around the, the, the overall XRP ecosystem, not a security. So, you know, it, we have already moved a lot of our activity and frankly, 95% of our customers are non-US. So 95% of their customers are non us understand that guys, right? It, I really didn't care what happened with the sec. Yes. Yes. It's, it's good. And it's bad. It's bad for Brad and Chris still, because they have to go to trial now and we need to support them guys. We, we fought all this way with them. Do not falter support these guys. That's what we need to do as an XRP community. These guys have been really trying to build use cases at levels that, you know, when, when have you ever had the, had the opportunity to own an asset that the IMF and world bank have been testing or central banks have been testing never in your life, never in your life. Have you been able to, so understand this, they are fighting the fight for us. We need to support them still, even though our end, we, we have clarity now. So don't forget that. A lot of our activity has been outside the U.S. jurisdiction uh, because that's where our customer demand is. But I think that's where the U.S. is losing. And I think what the SEC has been trying to do is to put power and politics over what is really just sound policy and providing clear rules of the road such that entrepreneurs and investors can participate in this amazing new market around crypto and blockchain technologies. So this is still a legal process playing out. I think people watching, you know, an SEC appeal process, what that looks like. What does it mean for, for your company in the in, in your business in the interim? Look, as a matter of law, you know, the, the, the law of the land right now is that XRP is not a security. And until there is an opportunity for the SEC to file an appeal, which would take years, and frankly, what we're very an appeal would take years, guys. So we have some time here that we're going to be the only cryptocurrency on the planet besides Bitcoin that has clarity. Understand that. That is why I push XRP so much. That is why I educate you on XRP so much, because I knew there was a good chance for the next couple of years. XRP was going to be the only asset outside of Bitcoin that has. Clarity. What do you think that's going to do for banks? And optimistic the, if they were to file an appeal, we think that only uh, further solidifies the decision this judge made because Look, as a matter of law, as a matter of the facts, and really as a matter of you know, looking back in the history here, it, you know, for the SEC, really it's overreach to suggest, as the chair has said many times, that basically everything in the crypto space is a security. Well, you, we now have a judge very clearly saying that is just not true and very clearly saying XRP is not a security on exchanges and all these different use cases which I think helps the whole industry for sure. So this is a win for Ripple. It's also a win for the entire crypto industry. And I think that's why you saw the crypto industry react so positively over the last 24 hours. 
Love it. I love it, Brad. We're, we're here to support you, man. You'll, you'll never watch this, but know that I've always supported you and I still will support you. Here's Chris Larson. This is actually uh, a couple days, July 10th. I think this was from before, though, that just got reposted, but let me play this. It doesn't have anything to do with the case. I think what's really important is that any digital asset to be valuable has to be serving an actual use case. It can't just be speculation. Obviously, a lot of the, the market today is really speculative. True. But we think over the long run, it's going to be that combination of deep liquidity, market makers. Deep liquidity, all right? This is going to be a theme, and I talk to you about this a lot. You need AMMs. You need hooks before we can really start doing crazy shit. Okay, that, those are the two things that need to have happen. And we just saw the Certic audit come back on the AMMs at like 92%, went, went really well. I think there were some minor things they had to take care of, but it's looking good for AMMs, guys. And those should be coming either quarter three or quarter four of this year. You know, institutional bets being made, but very importantly, it has to have a use case. We think the use case for the XRP ledger and XRP the digital asset is really around initially reducing the cost of liquidity for cross-border payments. Long term though, we think uh, you know it's a, a key winner in this race to be another digital asset for the world for all kinds of use cases. So digital asset for the world for all kinds of use cases. Remember, it's not just the cross cross uh, border payments, right? They're going after tokenization too, and that encompasses several things, right? Tokenizing stocks, tokenizing bonds, tokenizing real estate, tokenizing derivatives, right? We want the D. We, we want the derivatives. That is that is that is where a lot of the money is in the world, right? And then you have private markets as well. There's quadrillions of dollars in private markets that, that we could use some tokenization for too and bring that value onto the XRP ledger. Maybe on a private ledger, right? Because those are private markets. That's the way you say it. It's a long-term play, has to uh, have value. Can't just be a store of value for store of value's sake. They have a use case and, and that's how we see this. Long-term play. You got to zoom out and look down, guys. We are still in 2023, right? And central banks are still testing, right? So you have to understand that we're not here yet to get to a 50 or $100. We need some things to happen, happen first. Happen, happen. We need stuff to happen, happen first, yo. All right? Keep an eye on this. If you are in Australia or you are on that side of the planet, there's going to be a, a XRP, Australian XRP community prepares for a wave of innovation at the XRP Gold Coast Conference. It doesn't say when the date is, unfortunately, in this article, or I just overread it and missed it. But hey, uh, check us out. Oh, this is fun. I, this is really fun. I don't know if I'm going to get copyrighted for this, but this is fun. Homie, I prayed for peace, not for police. I was not even thought the SEC didn't lie and deceive him. And what the fuck? What the fuck? Billy, we know your bosses know the agenda that caused us. You gave either the repair and slowed our adoption now we done run out of options man this is fucked up see the sec's run by corrupt us we say come in and talk you can trust us and then use what we say to obstruct us they pretend to protect and instruct but all right I'll, I'll put this in the description so you can watch the rest of it if you want to let me keep going here all right so we got to talk about sbi why is sbi a big deal well be sbi this is yoshi taka katao and he is the man in japan for banks all right he he is the leader in the space in japan he also is an early investor in ripple at XRP, right? And I think he's an early investor in PolySign too, but this is a new new, new news. I, I kind of knew this was coming, guys. Uh, it was just a matter of time, but Bank of Japan to use XRP to facilitate cross-border payments. Why did I know this was coming? Because of this, right? He, he would, he, he's gone, he's, he's, he's been out here telling you that every bank in Japan will use XRP by 2025. That's how I knew this was coming, right? It, it wouldn't make sense that all the banks in Japan are using XRP, but the central bank isn't, right? So you, you gotta like, you gotta lurk at certain things and kind of, hey, this makes sense if that would happen, right? In a significant development, in a significant development, the cryptocurrency world, Bank of Japan has announced its decision to leverage Ripple's digital asset XRP to streamline cross-border payments. This is a groundbreaking move and marks a major step toward the adoption of cryptocurrencies, right? Or do you, you own an asset or you are thinking about buying an asset? that central banks are testing that they want to use. You've never had that chance in your life. Sure, you own some dollars and euros and whatever, but that's not like the real asset they're gonna be using, right? Right. That, that's their reserve assets, right? You got the Great British Pound, Japanese Yen, US dollar, the Euro, and then I think it's the Chinese Yuan, right? But uh, that's the IMF uh, reserve currencies, right? But XRP, you, you can't, you can't, you cannot look at, you cannot ignore this, guys. XRP, the native digital currency, the Ripple Network, has garnered attention as a suitable cryptocurrency for facilitating international money transfers due to its impressive speed, low transaction fees. These characteristics make an ideal choice for the Bank of Japan. Easy, 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 right? And you can check if you want to 
find this article, guys. Just look up every bank in Japan will use, and then you just look at that, and you'll find it. All right, hey, are you on Threads? Cool. All right, I'm gonna leave this in the description too. My friend Vadim built this, and uh, you can actually put in your username here. Like, if I put in Crypto Sensei with two eyes, and I hit search, it's gonna pull up basically who's following me that I'm not following and who I'm following that doesn't follow me, if that makes sense. And basically you can see kind of on this left side, basically who I'm following, who's not following me back. And on this side, who is, who's following me that I'm not following back. And some of these people are my friends. So I need to go in and do that. So I just wanted to show you that really quickly. Uh, this is a free service to use. And we got the Cryptonaires new website up here, guys. If you haven't seen it, please uh, Uh We just put this out, guys. There's a lot of really good information here that you can take a look at. Here's me uh, right here and my team here, Cass and Lawrence, who do, do all the edits and our partners down here. But you get a lot of stuff joining Cryptonaires, guys. You also get it free, free into Carolina Keith's two discords for one price, which is pretty dope. All right, let me keep going here. One out of four central banks are now piloting a retail CBDC. One out of four, 150 central banks. One out of four are now. So like, what are we talking about? 35, 38-ish, 30, 37 and a half, okay? 37 and a half central banks around the world are now piloting retail CBDCs, right? These guys are already probably working on wholesale, right? Wholesale always comes first. That is what banks use internally to move value between other banks and central banks, right? But the retail is for me and you and for merchants and businesses, okay? More than 90% of global financial leaders are, excuse me, nine, more than 90% of glo global finance leaders think blockchain and digital assets will significantly impact their business. 90%, nine out of 10 people they've asked. Right, those ten, those those ten people that don't say, "Hey, the cryptocurrency is not for me," they might have a very small business, or maybe they don't really see. Maybe they don't have somebody on that team telling them how impactful uh, uh, Ripple, XRP, XLM, Quant, Casper, all of these blockchains are to build on, right? And uh, you know, this will be this will, this will only grow up higher, but you'll never get 100% of everybody, guys. You know, there's always going to be people that are going to be flooding, right? Okay, so what are we waiting? What are we missing? This is from Mickey B Fresh. He does, he has a great channel. He gets very technical on all that stuff. I would recommend you go and checking out his YouTube. The more transactional volume, the more people who are gonna stake the pool. Therefore, it's deeper liquidity. He's talking about AMMs and liquidity pools, okay? And the deeper liquidity, the more volume you can run through and over and over. Because the transaction fees are so low on the XRP ledger and the transactions are so fast, that means arbitraging is going to be more efficient and the pool is going to be able to capture more volatility for yield. XRPL's low transaction fees, high transaction fees make arbitraging so much more competitive and so much faster that it reduces the pool's arbitrage losses and increases the pool's volatility gain. The consensus process doesn't allow any party to be the dictator of the moment to run the block. This makes arbitrage slots more valuable and should increase the returns on the continuous auctions, resulting in more liquidity token destruction and more yield. One of the disadvantages of holding assets like XRP and Bitcoin is their volatility. All right, why do we have stable coins? Because volatile assets are like hard to hold and use. I'm hopeful that this combination of features in the AMM specification will turn that disadvantage into a significant advantage. AMMs will harvest volatility for yield. Volatility will drive market makers, which the AMM makes the spread, right? If the price of Bitcoin stays at $20,000, eventually everybody who wants to buy at $20,000 is bought and everybody who wants to sell at $20,000 is sold. It takes a movement in price to really drive that volume. And of course, volatility increases arbitrage of profits because the AMM gets more out of balance more, and the AMM gets a cut of those profits through the auction mechanism. So this could really turn the volatility of a digital asset from a downside to an upside. Super excited about it. And automated market makers are poised to become a major cornerstone of global crypto liquidity across all assets and multiple shares. See, that's what I'm waiting for, guys. I'm not looking to sell my XRP at 80, 90 cents. I'm looking to stake my XRP in some of these liquidity pools once the AMMs come out and make make passive income from it, right? That's what I'm trying to do here. Let me see if let me see if somebody's posted this flywheel effect XRPL. Let me see if someone's if I can find an image on this. I want to show you this real quick. Images. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This this is not exactly what I wanted to show you, but okay. What? Okay, that was weird. This is kind of, so value, feasibility, scalability, a, a flywheel effect. So you basically, you start here, proving value, uh, proving feasibility, moving production, uh, building trust and demand, expediting move to move to go live, and then the go live effect. But this is not the exact image I want to show you guys. All right, the virtuous cycle. This is what I was trying to get at. Adoption of new tech leads to efficiency, which creates emergence of new use cases. The positive feedback loop and adoption leads to exp exponential growth via the compound effect. 
Digital assets, e.g. XRP, used for payments will increase the efficiency of moving value. Consequently, new use cases arise, further increasing demand of the digital asset. As use grows vertically and horizontally, the value of the asset goes up. This creates the desire to hold asset and, and as a store of value. A store of value rate rates grow. Uh, scarcity of assets increases, right? As more XRP is bought and taken off the open market, that's more scarcity, right? Further driving up the price due to the lower availability of supply on the transaction, right? This is this is what I'm waiting for. I'm not I'm not here for the dollar. A dollar doesn't change my life. Does it change your life? If it changes your life, you have a shit ton of XRP and congratulations to you, you got in early. So it says opposite of a virtuous cycle is referred to as a virtuous cycle of death spiral, right? So that's the negative loop that compounds, but that's what we're not looking for. We're looking for this virtuous cycle to come in and that's gonna happen once AMMs come, right? AMMs, automated market makers. That is what we're waiting for, guys. And hooks, hooks are smart contract functionality. I've done several videos on this if you just go back and look, but have some perspective, zoom out, all right? Yes, we have clarity now in the secondary market, but it doesn't mean we go to $100 in 24 or 48 hours, guys. We have to just breathe. And if you if this is a place where you wanna take profits, if you're not really long for the ride, do what you think is best. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. Go talk to your financial advisor. But I'm not here for this. I'm here for much bigger value. And that's what I'm sticking around for. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you can. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know down in the comments because I love you when you do. Thank you. Bye.